Okay, uh, this is the open source triage for Monday, October 21st for the Chef Workstation team. Um, one note, uh, we're going to be moving this meeting from Mondays to Fridays around lunchtime um, because Mondays have way too many meetings and we want to, now that we're starting to do backlog grooming and sprint planning, um, we want to uh, have open source triage before that so that we um, can start using this meeting to get an idea of community issues and PRs that come in that we think are high priority and, and should get looked at um, uh, for sprint planning and backlog grooming purposes. So we'll be moving this to Fridays. Um, and with that, we can get started. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go look through um, some of these repos for updates on um, issues that we've already looked at. Um, and then I'm gonna go look at, in at the issues um, from oldest to newest, and we'll go through that way. Um, so, Chef Analyze, we did, uh, this one has a comment. Oh, cool. That's so amazing. I love community. Yeah. It's just 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Uh, and then I saw these ones that haven't been triaged yet. Uh, build have package for Linux kernel 2. Um, so this was originated from the pull request below. Yeah. Mark said, like, if we're not building it for kernel 2, let's just put an issue. I don't know if we need to, but yeah, it will be a nice to have for kernel two, uh, Linux kernel two packages. Okay. In, is this already covered by one of the yeah. PRs? Yeah, actually it is. And uh, I linked it in the Zen board, but not okay. in the one. So probably I should do that there. Is it is it this PR? Yes, it is. Okay. 
Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah. You've already got it marked as okay, closer. Sorry. Cool. No, no, no. You're fine. Yeah, this is definitely you actually. A fair question, Tyler, is we do this labeling for issues and pull requests as well? I have been. Um, that one to me gets a little hard. Like what I would love is if there is a pull request that links to an issue that labels would just get automatically copied or we don't need them or something. I, I feel like if we're using labels for reporting purposes and searching purposes, we probably do want to label these. But uh, yeah, it definitely seems like there is some that can be copied automatically. Um, we probably want to decide if we use UI or UX. There's some yep. overlap there, but like UI is more about the clicky clicky or the exact words you type and less. Okay. Like UX is just like the experience, right? It, it seems easy and automate, right? Like where you have an actual UI and the command line is our user interface, but like, yeah, I've been uh, not marking command line things as UI. I've been only marking them as UX, and I think that's the right thing to do. I know that. I would, yeah, personally, I would just choose one of them and just yeah, probably just UX. Just use that. Okay, so that was the chef analyze. I'm good. I'm glad you're getting some food, Celine. Or John. I think Celine is eating too. Um, okay. Um, so I responded to all the existing ones there. Uh, keep going through here and looking at ones that have been updated. I'm looking for that little like blue line that says that uh, someone has responded to this. Um, nothing new on there yet. I know we've already triaged all those. Chef Fi, no pull requests, looking at issues. None of those have gotten responded to and we've triaged everything in that. Repo, uh, we'll save Chef TK. Actually, I can go look at all the existing triaged issues. We can go see if any of these have gotten updates. Okay, um, I think I'll tag this waiting for contributor response now. Would it be helpful to just create some um, preset searches that are Yes, like all absolutely. The things across all of our cookbooks or all of our repos, I mean. Yeah, absolutely, it would be. Okay. I was trying to think about how to do that for the chef stuff too, because our triage is like we just get bogged down in chef and we never leave it. Yep. And um, all right, I'll probably like figure out what that looks like and then just create it for both. Yeah. So my my yeah. goal. Oh, Good. I was going to say that might be a good thing to look at Zen Hub for. It's got some really good ability to like roll up the repos into a view and then like not have epics or like filter it on 
Yeah, if we could do it in Zen label or whatever, and then you could see it across all your projects. That would be super good to just do it there if we could. And then just having um, those links in the calendar invite, because then we can just click on those links, go through yep. those things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just want to make this easier and faster and all that. I, I have a to do for myself for something similar than that, so I can add that to my to do. Uh, let me add that real quick. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll be curious to see is if they can replicate this blue functionality, which is like someone has responded to this issue since the last time you looked at it. So I don't think there's stuff like that in here. Anyways, okay. Okay, better Chef Workstation app. Check out Chef Workstation. Looks like these just need reviews. Okay, cool. So it looks like they've got updated and we can go. And this should already be in progress on our board. So I'll sign to myself so I can go get this closed. I think I can close that expediter one now to this other one. Yep. Okay, and so it's got an update. Yep, 
Agreed, Chris. No updates on those. Probably won't have updates on any of these. Yeah. Uh, yes, John, at the very beginning of this meeting, I mentioned that we're going to move this to Fridays. So we'll have it before the, so A moves it out of meeting Monday, and uh, then we'll have things uh, triaged um, before sprint planning, so we can get a better idea um, about what we want to do, any community reported issues during sprint planning. That makes me very excited. Yeah. I don't have a chance on Monday to like breathe between meetings. Let alone eat lunch. <laughs> Tim, is there a way? So the the thing you have that applies labels automatically, um, we need yeah. to get it applied to the Scotiaf repo. Is there a way that like I can do that, or we can do that, or is it? <laughs> you, is it just... you cannot change labels on a fork. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What? So that's the problem. Is like you go out, to, you reach out to the API and say, like, set a label on this, and it just throws like a five hundred on the API call. And what about manually? Uh, maybe. Go, I mean, click on the issues tab. I don't think you can do it. it. I was going to say, if you can do it manually, then you should. Click on labels right there. I'll do the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should. So you should totally be able to do it. Well, let me try making one. I'll have to look at what exactly it's doing. But yeah, when you do it on a fork, it just throws a 500. GitHub's API is not the best, so I don't. This is like their classic API. They're trying to move everything to the new. At least the untriage. The new one. Um, I'll copy it. Yeah. Yeah, just create them by hand. Uh, uh, not something I'm going to do during this meeting, yeah. but <laughs> it's something that can be done. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, we got rid of correctness. I also want to uh, learn. We did. That. It didn't seem like it. Get out of this repo. Also, yeah. Now yeah. I realize the irony of copy across the one thing. Yeah, I need to. I need to fix the all the repos. There's a whole bigger setting aside time for that thing that doesn't fit into a specific sprint because it's like part of the other the third team that I'm on uh, of like how we open source here at Chef. Yep. Yeah, we might open the exact same PR for that one which I thought was a great example of why we have sprints and stuff. Yep. He's like, oh, I was working on that. I'm like, there's a board. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> That's also hard uh, because then he has to look at another team's board, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That was why I wanted to get all that stuff onto the teams that own the components of everything we got out of that whole mess. I don't know if this fully works. I think there's some things broken with it, and I need to look at it. Yeah. Um, I don't... Um, know where that fits in our sprints. This is kind of a avoiding disasters if this gem goes away kind of thing. And also just like, we should get everything that we own onto Mixlib blog and onto Mixlib CLI and onto Mixlib whatever. Yep. <clears throat> but it seems like I can uh, close this one in favor of you one. You can close them off that, yeah. He took a very different approach. He, he made stove dependent on Chef itself, which really, really want to avoid. Our cook style blog post is going up right now. Nice. Nice. <laughs> There's going to be at least one more. But. And that's about the pin bot. Okay. 
So fun. That. Yep, this is the bug. <laughs> Post on Slack on second edition. Also, the stove uh, repo is new, so um, I was going to go through and triage these issues. Yeah. I don't think we want to add any new features to stove. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like our, we should be pretty upfront that our long term goal is to fold the stove functionality back into Knife itself and to get rid of stove. <coughs> Let's check some artifact tree. Let's check some values that provided with a blue artifact name. Following. I mean, it seems valid. Yeah, probably. An artifact are installed. Turn the notification on. I'm going to give you a basic off. So in their installation, I mean, they or someone decided to disable or disallow access tokens. It, I mean, like it, it seems like the right answer is to say you should have your artifact installation updated to support authentication tokens because those are a secure thing. But I understand they may not have control over that, right? Um, yeah, they might not have control of that, but like, we're not going to spend development effort to like fix their bad security. So in that case, I'm going to close this. Um, I would just close that and be like, that's not, that is not best practice. Like we don't want let you off to the chef server, you know, like we require yeah. keys. Mm 
So JFrog actually has a, a knife artifactory plugin. Can we just use that and get rid of stove? <laughs> yeah. We should just ship that in Chef. <laughs> just be like, ha ha, done. <laughs> Yeah, it has knife artifactory share list install download show. We should just ship that and then get rid of stove. Artifactory upload erroneously throwing. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So this looks like a valid bug. I guess I don't understand how supplying a bad token and, oh, I guess it's the error itself is incorrect. It's not that the cookbook already exists. It's that we, if there's a bad token, they should get a message saying bad token. And um, yeah. Do not call sim links for login credential files. We just need to expand path probably somewhere. Sounds reasonable. It's usually what it is. Local mode. This is your cheese matter factory.
I don't think we would ever do that. But... If you wanted a local thing, like zip up the directory. And I'm not familiar with stove. What is, is it really easy to explain the filtering that stove applies to the final package? Yeah, it's kind of like some arbitrary stuff that, that uh, Seth was into. It's not, unfortunately not driven on anything like the chef ignore files or any of the stuff that, that we kind of built into chef. Uh, but it has like a set of folders it will upload. So it, it will say like, I'm going to upload the metadata, the readme, and anything in these folders, recipes, providers, resources, whatever. If it's not in there, I don't upload it. And would they get the um, same functionality from using chef ignore? Chef ignore would be a, a in my opinion, like a, a, a much better way to do that because you get to actually like define what you want as the ignore. Otherwise you upload everything. Uh, and then it matches the pattern that you get like on the client side with chef ignore. Like it just seems like a much more, a much better setup. Uh, that that's where I would like to take like making the knife supermarket share stuff just honor the chef ignore file and trim based on that. That seems to eliminate most of the need for, for stove, if not all of it. It seems like we need to be doing some like type changing on this. But regardless, it seems like a valid bug. Yeah, that's valid. I mean, we'll never do it because the tool will just go away, but. Right. I would just. But if it went into knife, these things are supported. So, at least yeah, we'll that's the SSL feature. We just call it feature request and leave it at that.
Okay, I think that is everything in stove. Yeah. Okay, last three to look at VS Code Chef. That's a bug. I'm not sure if it's something we can fix, but uh, it's worth looking at the concept of like no match might be a thing we can do. Yeah. Because there's probably a few that are like uh, incorrectly autofilling in ways that is really annoying. Yep. Yeah, that sounds totally valid. What, what did you say the no match functionality is? I don't know if there is a no match, but like we should look and see if there is such a thing as no match. So we could just be like, don't, no match on undo, whatever. I hope, I hope there is, that seems like, seems basic. Yeah, we need that. That's a future request. Yeah, this would be an in, uh, enhancement. And ideally, right, ChefSpec could just auto-generate these. Right? Uh, the snippets, like, don't snippets seem to be like pre-generated in your package, like little JSON files? Oh, I, I think this is more about like um, making it aware of all the RSpecisms and stuff. So like when you want to create your Chef Runner, like that there's snippets for like what a chef runner looks like and what all, you know, what a basic, what basic R spec functionality looks like. Yeah. Cause I, every time, like I can never remember what chef specs are supposed to look like every time I end up on the docs or like looking yeah. at some other cookbook or something, if it would just I like, I, I cannot function without snippets in my day to day work. So I think it's yeah. worth getting in there. And we have good snippets for all the resources, so it seems like we should totally have Yeah, the resource the stuff's already there. Specs. Probably pretty easy to do. So I'm guessing my headphones are dying. There might be a way to do that now. I, that's another one worth, I would just tag that as some sort of feature enhancement and look at it if that if there's something in, in uh, VS Code that allows us to do that. Because if we knew what file just got saved, then we could just pass that as the argument right. to the style. But I, that's probably exposed somewhere. But yeah, they've got to have that. The VS Code that's docs are like this big for like this much functionality. And I'm not sure how you're supposed to like know how to write extensions for it. Like, I don't know if you're supposed to know a person at Microsoft that can tell you how it works or what, but there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, there's gotta be a way to do this. But like, where do you even post to ask? Like. Microsoft's web page, like where do you even put that question? Yeah. An MSDN. Yeah. Is that even a thing anymore? I'm dating myself here? Does Pretty that sure come those are Does Chef have a, a subscription? Can we get the CD binder sometime? Yeah. <laughs>
I want to just ask this person to try to reproduce this because we changed all of that that code on the back end. Like Stuart put some logic in there to have it. It uses workstation now, so they have to have workstation. Um, which is like, yeah, we need more story there about how to get people actually on a workstation, but. Should all just magically work now. Okay, that is all of our issues labeled. So I think um, with the last time left, I would propose that we sort new issues by oldest and go through these and see um, if we could start closing some of them. Yes, please. So, Yeah, we still need to figure out what our story is there. Ideally without like reinventing the wheel. Yeah, so I don't think we can close this one. That is very much still valid. Okay. Chef configure. I think that's kind of the same thing, same issue. Is like the same root, at least. Like, how do we do configuration? And how does a person set up? Like, what is that? If a person installs Chef Workstation and they want to get started, what is the first command they run? Yeah. Is there like a chef in it that they run that like gets them set it up or gets them set up to like talk to a chef server and all that? Like, what is that? Because it's nice configure right now and it really sucks. Okay. 
Well, with that, um, we are about out of time. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna stop. Um, stop there. Yeah, so I think my goal for this meeting would be to, number one, have a view where we first um, look for new, newly submitted customer issues or existing issues we have triaged that customers have updated um, and we go respond to that. So first priority of open source, we should go respond and work with our open source community, right? Um, and then I think uh, the second one would be um, okay, well, and as part of responding to those and, and really triaging issues, we could attempt to um, find issues that we think we want to talk about on Monday. So with 233 items, right, it's super easy to get lost and, and have no idea when we go into sprint planning, like what open source PR do we want to pull in? So I'd love to figure out a way to, to turn this meeting into, or, or one of the things that we are able to do as part of this is at least highlight issues that want to get, we want to discuss about getting into the next sprint. Um, I propose we use those priority labels for that. Um, and so, so during triage, if we see a thing that we think needs to get discussed, we tag it with a priority label. And then in sprint planning, we look at stuff that has a priority label. And if it does, we decide to pull it in or remove the priority label. What do y'all think about that? Like, obviously, don't have time to do it today, but kind of a, a, a proposal for how we start doing some of these things. Cool. Okay, I see thumbs, so uh, we will attempt that um, starting with the next trios meeting. So, okay. All right. With that, we are at time. Thanks, y'all. I'll get this recording uploaded, and I will move the meeting to Fridays. Have a good one.